Hello, my name is Ovel Gaither and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today on my channel, I'm gonna be taking you guys along on the journey of me making these really cool denim patchwork Boston bags and they came out so dope. I'm actually really shocked at how good they came out. So this is the bags that I make in this video. I did two of them. They both pretty much look the same, but it came out so freaking dope. Like this is, this is amazing. I really do love these bags. I just love the quality. I love the pattern. And you know, a little, I did a lot of things for the first time with these bags. So for the first time I did piping. It's not 100% perfect, but it came out really good for my first time. So I'm definitely excited because I've always been scared to try piping. It, I was just intimidated by it. It always looked so difficult and hard. So I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to deal with it. But you know what? I've really been getting in this mindset of don't be so scared to try new things. Try new things. That's how you learn and elevate and grow your skill. So I've been pushing myself to try new things. And then I also did a new patchworking way. So I actually had to pull out my regular home sewing machine that I haven't used in freaking years. And I did like the zigzag stitching. Um, it came out really dope. I love how it looks. It just amazing amazing bags and on the insides of these ones i did a red interior which i normally never do red just because i feel like red is such a basic color that people associate luxury bags with for like interiors and things like that so i normally stay away from red because it always just seems tacky to me almost at this point but it's really the only color that i had that i think will look good well i have a few other colors but i just thought red would also look good you know just make it pop a little bit and it does have purse feet on the bottom you know we love a good purse foot action on the bottom they're amazing and I really love these bags. So this is one, and then this is the other one. Again, they look the same. They are a little bit different, but for the most part, they are pretty much the same. But yeah, if you do wanna stick around and watch me make these bags in this video, please watch to the end and make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, leave a comment down below, let me know what you think about these bags and let's get into the video. All right, so it is September 6th. I am still in pre-production for these bags, but I have a few things that I have to do before I can actually start production and things like that. And I kind of wanted to film this part just to kind of, I don't know, I feel like it would, this would be a really interesting part of the video to add in. So I have a majority of my pieces already cut out. So I cut out all of my pieces and everything. So the way that I'm gonna do these bags is, I'm. this is, it's an interface. I haven't did any interfacing, fusing, anything like that. So this is pretty much the front and back exterior because um, with these type of Boston bags, you know, they kind of fold like this. So I use this denim and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scraps and I'm gonna zigzag stitch them on to this actual piece. I think it will be a lot easier than trying to take my scraps and then creating one big textile piece and then cutting it out. Um, this way I have a little bit more control over the pattern and you know where the colors exactly are gonna hit and things like that. So um, I'm gonna get my bag of scrap that I didn't grab yet. All right, so this is my bag of scraps. Um, one of them, I have so many scraps because I save all of them because I never like to throw away my scraps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig through this, the, um, find the colors that I wanna use, um, and then I'm just gonna kinda cut them out, puzzle them together, and then zigzag stitch them on. And my industrial machine, is, which is behind me, it only does a straight stitch. So I'm going to pull out my a regular home sewing machine that I haven't used in so long and use that for zigzag stitching. Um, so this is kind of going to be a little interesting. I have a lot of things that I haven't done before. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out all of these scrap pieces, gluing that, and then that's what you're going to see. All right, so I kind of finished getting the layout of the first one. I have all my pieces kind of clipped and laid out on here. So this is gonna be the front and back. And of course, once I finish stitching all of these pieces on, I will go ahead and cut along the edge and make sure that it's lined up to the actual pattern piece underneath. And then these are the side pieces right here. So again, um, once I sew those on, I'm gonna cut them to the shape that's on the back. So. Um, once I'm done, I'm gonna flip it over like this and then cut all those um, edges off so that it'll be 
the pattern piece that it needs to be. So this is the first one pretty much done and complete. I'm gonna set this over to the side and then start on the next one and do the same thing. So that's what you're gonna see. All right, so I have my old handy dandy sewing machine that I freaking haven't used in years. Ever since I bought my industrial machine, I really haven't used this one. Um, but again, I have to use this one because I need to zigzag stitch and this one's only straight stitch. So um, what I'm gonna do ahead and do is I'm actually going to start on the smaller side pieces first just to kind of get a feel for how this is gonna go. Um, because I have not done this technique before. This is my first time. I don't really do patchwork, so um, I'm kind of nervous, but not too nervous. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the small side pieces. I actually do have to thread this machine up first. Um, so I'm actually grabbing my little, uh, what is this thread stand? I have this little thread stand holder that I'm gonna use to hold my spool of thread because I'm using a, bull, um, a bigger spool than the one that this machine actually holds. So I have this little, um, side accessory one that I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead, thread up my machine and start sewing the little patches on. And that's what you're going to see. Hopefully this isn't too bad. Um, I don't think it should be, but we'll, I'll let, um, we'll see. <laughs> All right, so it has been several days later, I think about like two days since I last filmed. And I kind of cut my filming short um, from the last clips just because sewing on all of the patches and things like that, it was just really hard filming with the tripod in a way and trying to get everything. It was a big piece on the small, because I was using my small home sewing machine and I haven't used that machine in years. And it's so much of a smaller space than my industrial. I'm not really used to it anymore. So it was just, it was just hard. So I stopped filming. Um, and I'm just gonna use what I got, but I did finish everything. Everything's interface cut out and ready to go. So yesterday I actually, no, was that yesterday? Um, the day before yesterday, I actually ended up remaking one of these pieces. So this is what it's looking like, really dope. Like I really love this look on here. It's really dope. I was kind of going for like almost like a camouflage print, not print, but like a camouflaging, um, patterning layout uh, with the patches. So I did that, all of the side pieces are done and everything is interfaced as well and ready to go. And this is also the color that I'm going with for the interior. I decided to use red. I rarely use red colors because I just feel like it's such a um, basic color that people um, kind of automatically go to when they're like making, trying to, you know, make a luxurious item or, you know, just, I just feel like it's a lot more basic, but it's really one of the only colors I have that I think will really look good on the inside of these bags. So, um, everything's done, good to go. I, again, like I said, I had to remake one of these ones just because I didn't like the patterning layout. Um, so I redid that one and kind of copied it, um, from this one. So the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to sew on my name tags. Um, and I'm, well, the first thing that I'm going to do is sew on the name tags and then put on the bottom supports and all of that good stuff. Um, and then probably go ahead and do the piping and all that. So I really have a feeling that these bags are going to be a little bit on the tricky side. And the only reason why I say that is because there's a lot of new things in this that I'm not, I haven't done before. Um, one, which is sewing with a patchwork this way. I've never done that. Um, another is sewing with the piping 
Um, and there's another one in here. Maybe that's just the only two. But it's all, I don't, I don't know. I just, cause I, the only time that I made a Boston bag, this style was when I did my Punkaboo bags. Um, I did not film a YouTube video of me making those bags, but they were, my Punkaboo bags, they're Boston styled. And it was kind of a difficult sew just because the shape and how you have to put them together, it was kind of difficult. And these ones are a little bit more bigger. Um, and I don't know if they're gonna be stiffer. I don't know, but the stiffer, the harder. So, um, ooh, I don't like how that was. But if it is, it's definitely gonna be a challenge. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing on the name tags, the bottom uh, support plates and everything. And I really hope, oh no, first actually I skipped. I thought it would be a good idea to do a layer of top stitching around the zigzags just to really get these um, patch pieces tagged down because again, the only thing holding these pieces to the actual fabric that I used underneath is these zigzag stitches. So I think if I went in and did a top stitching, it would definitely just secure everything and make sure it lays nicely. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a layer of top stitching, might even do two on each one. I don't know, depending on how I like it. Um, so I'm gonna go do that and then check back in once all of that's done. So. Let's get into this. I'm really nervous going into this project. I'm probably shipping for nothing, but a lot of the times the, the projects that I think are gonna be so difficult are really the ones that aren't that bad. And the ones that I think are gonna be easy are the ones that are normally like, okay, this is doing too much. So we'll see. Hopefully I'm not over exaggerating how hard I think this is gonna be, but let's get into sewing. So yeah. All right, so I have my name tags and the bottom support sewn on the bottoms of the bag. And I already went ahead and put the purse feet in. I did those off camera. Um, so I actually didn't end up doing the top stitching on the pieces. I started to, but then once I started doing it, I realized I hated the look of it. And it kind of threw everything off. Cause I'm kind of going for this like messy, but neat look like you know like a beautiful mess in a sense so and the top stitching really just threw it off it made it look just really weird so i was like you know what i'm just gonna take the top stitching out i didn't like it so i went ahead with my name tags purse feet and all that stuff on so now what i'm gonna go ahead and do is i have a bunch of these little handle connectors these are the colors that i'm using for the handle connectors one side is going to be a light blue and then one side is going to be a medium blue so what i'm going to go ahead and do is top stitch all of these together um sew them up and then rivet them on the front and back exteriors of these. Um, and I think these are gonna look really, I'm using just regular silver hardware for these and I think these are gonna be really cool. So I'm super excited to see how this is gonna turn out. So let's start sewing up all of these little shaft connections. And I think I have a total of, yeah, I have a total of eight of these to do. So let's do that. All right, so it's looking kind of like a mess right now, but I went ahead and I put on the handle connectors and I put the rivets on as well. So um, these were actually not too bad to put on. It did take quite a long time. So now what I'm actually gonna go ahead and do is I have all of the little side panel pieces and the way that I'm sewing this back together, I actually have to attach the lining to the actual pieces instead of sewing them separate. So I'm gonna go ahead and base the lining pieces onto the side panels and then I'm gonna go ahead for the first time ever, well, I did a test piece and I did the piping on there, but I'm gonna do piping on a bag for the first time and I'm really nervous because I'm really, 
I don't, I don't know. I'm just really nervous. I never really did piping because I was always afraid and scared to mess up and stuff like that. So I stayed away from it. But this time I'm forcing myself just to try to, you know, elevate my skill. You know, just try to, I'm trying to do something a little different. You know, you know the vibes. So I'm going to go ahead and sew on the lining. And then I'll probably start on the lining too. For the interiors of this bag, I'm doing really simple linings. It's not going to be any zipper pockets, no compartments, just my interior logo. That's it. Um, really boring, I know, but I really wanted to keep it simple um, just because I felt like I was already doing too much with this. Oops, sorry. I felt like I was already doing too much with this design, so I was like, let's just keep the inside simple. So I'm going to go ahead and start sewing up these linings and all that good stuff in the piping, and that's what you're going to see. All right, so it is the next day. I went ahead and sewed on the piping to the side gussets. And honestly, sewing the piping on wasn't that difficult. It really wasn't at all. Um, so it's the piping. I did a little piping stopper down here just to kind of hide the raw ends where the piping connects. So these are all the side pieces. I did also connect the lining to the gusset as well. And I also went ahead and sewed my name tags on the interior linings as well. So. This is my name tag right there. This is all that's gonna be on the inside of the actual bag. I'm not doing any compartments, zippers, pockets, anything like that. I just really want a simple, plain interior. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to start on, if I can find the piece, I'm gonna start on the actual um, zipper. So I have these little zipper tabs that I'm gonna use on the end uh, because the last time I did this style bag, I the way that the bag is, you know, the zipper, if you don't have a zipper stopper or like a fabric stopper for the zipper, um, it kind of touches the edge of where you have to sew your gusset. So when you go to open a bag up, if you're closing your lining off um, the way that I'm gonna do it and you use the bias binding, you can see the bias binding on the inside um, and it just looks really weird. And I just didn't like sewing it together that way. So this time I'm using an actual zipper stopper. I hope that made sense. I feel like every time I explain something, it don't make sense. But pretty much I'm just going to sew these on the end and it's going to have a zipper stopper on the end of that. Um, so I'm going to sew those together, attach this to the lining and exterior while also sewing the interior to the exterior. I hope that, see this is what I'll be talking about. Um, it, it sounds confusing, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So um, I'm actually kind of nervous for this one because the last time I did this, I did like smaller size um, bags. This is bigger and it's also patchworked. And the way that I did the patchworking is really um, probably not a way that I would do it again because, you know, I don't know if you can see, but since the patchworking is attached to the under layer of fabric, just through the zigzag stitching. So since I didn't stitch on top of the actual fabric, all of this is lifted from the fabric. It's just to connect, connected through the zigzag stitching. So everywhere where it's not zigzag stitching, you know, I'm worried that when the bag is done, the fabric is gonna be lifting off and it's gonna have that puckering look. And I really hope it doesn't. Um, I'm praying that it doesn't because if it does, I'm not gonna like these bags. I can tell you that right now. Um, so I really hope it does not because if it doesn't, I mean, that just wasted so much time, materials on these. Um, so we're gonna hope that it does not do that so I'm gonna go ahead and start on the zipper tabs all that good stuff and then that's what you're gonna see so let's get started <music>
All right, so it's been several hours later. My hair looks a mess. I look a mess. I feel a mess. But I haven't really been filming that much because sewing while filming is really hard. And these bags have really been kicking my butt. And it's just too much. So I kind of turned the camera off for a little bit. But so far what I did was I attached the zipper, got that in, top stitched that. I also basted the lining to the actual exterior. And I also went ahead and started stapling the gussets on. So this is the first side gusset on. Um, bro, when I tell you these bags are kicking my I'm not joking. Like, I'm really not. I really was for a second almost like, can I even like finish this project? Which normally happens halfway through every project that I do, but um, I normally just have to force myself past that point and then it's downhill. And then once it's done, it's like, oh, that's kind of cute, you know? Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to start sewing on these gussets, which I'm very afraid for. Um, I don't know how this is gonna be. I know it's gonna be tough. So um, that's what you're gonna see. Hopefully it's not too bad, but let's do that. As you can tell, I'm so tired. I, I just wanna be done. All right, so I freaking never thought this day would come, but I am literally almost done. When I tell you these bags have really been kicking my ass, I truly mean that, like word for word. So I didn't really film much sewing these gussets on just because it was, again, it was too much. It was really difficult and I just, I was stressed out. Um, I was cussing out my sewing machine, the bags itself, you know, it was just a lot. So I didn't really film much. Um, so I have the bias binding on that's done. Um, it looks like crap. I, the bias binding looks terrible. Um, I'm not really the best bias, bias binder um, for my finishes. They don't ever really look that well, but it's on the inside of the bags. And once they're turned right side out, um, you can't really tell. Um, so now that I have the bias binding on, what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually flip the bags out, which is going to be really hard. One, because I did piping. I did also did bias binding. So these corners are very stiff. Like it's going to be really a difficult task to turn these out. So um, I have these on. I've been wearing them for a little while while sewing because they've been hurting. My hands and um, wrists have been hurting. So hopefully my wrist and hands don't hurt too much while turning these out. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. And that's what you're going to see. It might not be that bad though, honestly. I could be definitely overdoing this, but I'm also scared just because I don't know how it's gonna look once I turn this right side out because um, I couldn't look at the piping because again, the bags are inside out. So I could turn this out and then it can look completely destroyed and like terrible because I haven't seen anything. So I'm just gonna pray and hope that it's perfect. And Ooh, this is about to be so hard to turn out. And I'm turning it through a freaking 10 and a half inch opening, so it's not much help that that is that case. All right, so I have both of the bags turned right side out. I did a little bit of pressing and stuff like that just to try to get it to look decent. And honestly, the piping on these bags isn't 100% the best, but it's honestly actually as well not that bad. So there's a few areas where I could have done a little bit better. So this is how the piping looks. Um, it, again, it's really not that bad. This is my first time. It's a little uneven in some areas. Um, my seam allowance must have been a little off. And then there's little areas um, where is it? Uh, is it on this one? 
I don't think it's on this one. I think it's on this one. I can't find it, but it was one where it was like, I didn't really catch all of the end of the piping. So a little bit of it is kind of out. Um, so, I mean, but it's honestly, again, not that bad. They look really dope. So now that they're turned right side out and that's pretty much done with, um, now all left that I really have to do is do the handles. So I have the handles, I have not sewn them up or anything. So I'm gonna sew up the handles, rivet those on. And then once that's done, I'm gonna give these another final little press and try to make them just wrinkle free as possible. Um, but I mean, it's looking really dope so far. I really like the design. It might take a little bit more while to grow on me. A lot of times when I make new stuff, um, I like it at first, but I don't like it 100%. And then like the next day I'll wake up and look at it and be like, okay, I really love this design. So I feel like that's what this is gonna be for me. Um, I mean, I really do like it. I don't know. I just feel like it has to grow on me a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the handles. And also the handles will really tie the whole look together. Um, it just probably looks a little weird because I don't have anything on the handle connector. So once that's on, it'll probably look so much more better. So I'm gonna do that and that's what you're gonna see. Okay, so it's been several days later. The bags are done, complete, and beautiful. I love how they came out. They have definitely grown on me. I think I said somewhere in the video that it would take a little while to grow on me. They definitely have. I love them. So um, I'm gonna show the bags, talk about them a little bit. Even though I showed them in the intro and pretty much talked everything about them, I'm just gonna redo it again. So this is one of them. I mean, look at the material, like. Come on now, you know, you freaking know the vibes. Like, I mean, I really don't have to do no more explaining. The bags speak for themselves. And what's crazy is I feel like it's kind of hard to see on camera how big these bags actually are. Yesterday, my cousin came over and she was like, oh my gosh, you look so much bigger in person. So this is kind of like a look at how big they are on body. So they're real, they're not really big, but they are pretty big bags. So these can fit a lot of good stuff in here. Perfect for every day. I mean, they're just so dope. I really love them and they do have the purse feet on the bottom. So they do protect the bottom of the bags. And um, the piping looks really good. Again, like I said, it's not perfect. There are some imperfect, uneven areas, but I mean, for my first time, it came out really good and I'm proud of myself in that aspect. And um, what, where was the area I was gonna say is one of these bags? Oh, it's a thread I have to cut right here. Um, I can't remember. There's a little fraying right here from the denim um, right there, but that's fine. It's not gonna be any issues. But these bags are super dope. So this is how it is. And names for these, I actually just did a little questionnaire on Instagram. Um, just to have a little fun, I was asking people what they thought I should name the bags. And I told people to submit names and then, you know, I would pick a name from the ones that they submitted. And if I liked one of them, I would send the person who submitted the one that I liked a free Smoney pouch, which is my little wallet design. Um, and people submitted, um, I got quite a few um, submissions, but I didn't really see anything. I'm trying to pull up the freaking thing so I can see the submissions, but I didn't really see anything. And I was like, oh my gosh, I freaking love that. So, um, Someone said the playground bags, light work patches, patched up, um, Rafa, matchy patchy, script scrap, um, Muna, all patched up, cowbells, pipe dream, 
bowler bag, denim confetti, peace by like I like I got a lot of good stuff. I just none of the names I saw really just kind of like gave me like that is this bag. Um there was like patch patch, stas patch, venom denim, mumu duffel, um cunty jean. There was one on here though. Um let me see where is it at. Now there was one on here that kind of sparked the name for me that I came up with on my own and I was like, oh, somebody's probably gonna say that but they never ended up saying it. But there was one on here that someone submitted. They said patched up denim or um, cow print, but patch print or denim print. So when they said that, I was like, blueprint. For some reason, blueprint popped in my head because the bags are blue. And um, I started thinking and I was like, oh, I could kind of name these bags like a blueprint because I wanted the bags to have like a also kind of like meaning as name. I wanted the name to kind of be a little bit meaningful too to the project. So that's why I feel like I didn't explain good enough that part, but I was thinking blueprint too, because like with these bags, I feel like I overcome a lot of my fears in bag making. And I feel like, you know, that really in creativity is the number one thing you have to do to go up in skill and really take your design skills and things like that to the next level is do the things that you're afraid to do that's really the blueprint to creating like do what you're afraid to do because that is where your next level up is going to come from like if you're scared like for me i was scared to do piping i just did it overcame the fear it wasn't that bad and now i'm going to do this all the time perfect it and now i'm probably going to put piping in every single bag that i do moving forward and i feel like that's really like you know the blueprint to designing and creating do the shit that you're afraid to do like come on now so, and I really like the name because I mean, this is the Blueprint Boston bag. Like, I mean, come on now, get into the material. You know the vibe. So I may end up going with the Blueprint and I still might contact the person who submitted this and I'm gonna be like, okay, I didn't exactly go with your name, but your name, what you submitted inspired me to come up with this. So I'm still probably gonna end up sending them something just for that. Um, but yeah, it was a fun little thing I did. I was like, you know what? No one's buying this money pouches. I have a few of them why not send it out for free it wasn't you know anything too expensive so that's that so i'm pretty sure i'm going to be ending up naming these bags the blueprint i love the design it's so amazing and i am probably going to be doing more patchworking things and using my scraps because i save all of my scraps i have so many of them i never really use them that often so when i do it's a really fun you know just unique interesting project i love all of the scrap products that i've done in the past so these bags are going to be retailing on my website for 400 $95 each shipping and dust bag is included in the cost. It is quite pricey, but uh, child, the work that I put in is the work that I'm gonna get paid for. Okay, yeah, you know the vibes. So, $495, all of everything is included. And I would rate for difficulty this project okay, I'm gonna say about an eight and a half. I would say about like an eight, eight and a half is the difficulty that I would rate this project because. It, it was some moments in here where I was like, ooh, I don't think I'm, a one moment was when I had to top stitch. So top stitching the first side of the zipper was easy, but when it came time for me to top stitch the other side, because the whole exterior was pretty much sewn together at that point, it was so hard to get under my machine and top stitch it. And at that point I was like, ooh, I don't know if my machine, or I don't know if this is gonna go under the machine for me to top stitch. And I was like, if it can't, I can't finish the bag because it has to be top stitched. So, I mean, I, I got it done, but I had to literally destroy the bag. Not destroy it, but like, you know, twist it, bunch it up all to get fit it under the machine. Um, that was a hard part. Sewing these gussets on was the hardest part out of everything. I really cried. I had to take a few breaks. I literally, oop, I'm dropping the bag. I literally had to stop and then restart the next day because I was like, I cannot continue doing this right now. Like I'm literally gonna cry. So, I mean, that was, I would just give the project an eight and a half. Eight and a half out of 10 difficulty for me. And I mean, but they came out amazing. It was all worth it. I thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification because again, I'm uploading pretty much every single project that I'm going to be releasing and putting out up over here on my YouTube channel um, for you guys to see. And make sure you give the video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think, what you think, what y'all think about the blueprint. Come on now. Also the message behind it too. Do the things that you're afraid to do because that is how you elevate, okay? Period. You, come on now, that's that's the gate to talk of the day. Do the things that you're afraid to do. So um, I'm gonna go, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next video.
this is 